Okay, this is a submersible pump. This is the motor end of the pump, and this is the discharge end, the fluid end. This is the intake screen. And the water comes in here, motor spins it. There's three stages in here that create the pressure, comes out the delivery end, goes up to your well or to your pump or to your reservoir or wherever it's gotta to go to. It's a submersible pump, because it's designed to go into the water. It comes with a cable lead, and it comes with a watertight connection, so is that it can go, be submerged. There's not a lot to them. They're cheap. They work really well. They're about one-fifth the price of a vertical turbine pump. And I guess we'll explain the vertical turbine pump when we get to one. But there's not much to them. Most of the time what happens to them, the motor burns out. Pump, usually the fluid end's still good. There's just a little coupler in there. You take the screen off, undo five or four bolts, remove the motor, remove the wire, put the new motor on, do your reconnection, put it back down hole. And whenever you order these, I don't know if you can see it or not, but before you put it down hole, record all this information off the motor because this information is just laser cut into the barrel. And once it gets corroded, like this one's just starting to corrode, you can't read this anymore. So you can't order a new motor because you don't know what it is. So, and it comes with a sticky plate usually. And what most people do is wherever their vertical turbine is, like those ones, either on the box where the, the connection is done, they'll put the motor information on a sticky or inside the cover. So you always have the information. Some people just stick it to the wall. That way you recorded all the information for your pump and your motor. They come with a little sticky piece like this here, but it'll be for the motor. When you're pulling a, a submersible pump, you have to undo a bunch of stuff. For safety sakes, always make sure you turn off the valve so you don't get backflow because you're gonna take the check valve out. And go over to the MCC, lock it out, tag it before you do anything to it. Call your electrician in. He will do the electrical disconnect on your, on your junction box. Once it's disconnected, then you can start removing the bolts. Your valve is off. Take your check valve out, remove your gauge so it doesn't get broken. Take it, set it off where it's safe. Because they're an oil filled gauge, they're very expensive. You'll get your chain hoist and you'll attach it to the hook on the roof and to this. You'll lift it up until you come to your first coupling. You'll take a pair of pipe wrenches, you'll remove it, set it off to the side. And at that time you have a pipe clamp that goes around it. And it's uh, just like very similar to this when it's got long ears on it and will sit on top of the hole so you don't lose your pump down hole. And then you'll just lift it up to the next section. Once you get it lifted up, put your pipe clamp back on it, underneath your pipe collar, undo that piece of pipe, set it off to the side and continue doing that until you get the fluid end out of, the, out of there. Make sure your fluid end is the same as the fluid end that you're putting in, same voltage, same phase, same size, same uh, pressure. If it is, reassemble it, put it back down hole. Put it all back together, get your electrician in to reconnect, and then remove your padlock off of the breaker panel. Now have your electrician turn it on to make sure that everything's working properly. And if it's three phase, it can turn two directions. Make sure it's going the right direction before the electrician leaves.